Welcome to the Terra Notebooks Quick Start Demo. This is Allie from the Terra team. In today's video, I'll go through a live demonstration of running the Notebooks Quick Start workspace. Notebooks are an example of an interactive analysis on Terra, one of two ways to analyze your data on the platform. Interactive analysis is typically used for exploring or visualizing your data and testing analysis code in real time. If you're new to Jupyter Notebooks or Interactive Analysis on Terra, you can learn the basics in our Intro to Notebooks tutorial. Click the link below to find this on YouTube. The Notebooks Quick Start workspace is a hands-on overview of how to do an interactive analysis in a notebook. In this video, I'll cover the four parts of the Terra Notebooks Quick Start. In part one, we'll explore Terra's data library by browsing Open Access 1000 Genomes data with the Data Explorer. Getting your data is the first part of any analysis on Terra. In part two, we'll use selection criteria to create a subset or cohort of the data set and save the cohort to your workspace. Then it's back to the workspace to set up the virtual application to run the notebook analysis. And once that's in place, the last step is to analyze the data in a Jupyter notebook. Ready to go? Start by logging into Terra in a Chrome browser at app.terra.bio. We'll start here at the Terra homepage, app.terra.bio. To find the Notebooks Quick Start workspace, click on View Workspaces or go to Your Workspaces in the main navigation menu. Once you're there, you can search for the Quick Start by going to Public Workspaces and typing in Quick. The Notebooks Quick Start will show up right here at the top. Click on the name to go to the workspace. Once you're here, you can skim through the documentation in the dashboard, which gives you an overview of the workspace and as well as instructions on how to run it. The first thing you want to do is to make your own copy. And you can do that by clicking on the three vertical dots at the top right. Choose Clone. And in the form that shows up, you want to name your copy. I'm going to give it the date. And choose a billing project from the drop down menu. You might only have one or two billing projects, and that's just fine. This isn't going to cost a lot to run. This workspace has no authorization domain because it's public access data. So you don't need to fill that in and click Clone Workspace. And in a few seconds, you'll have your own copy. You can see at the top your billing project right here and the name of your copy of the workspace. Great. The first thing you'll want to do is to download or open the step by step instructions in a new tab right down here. You can download them by clicking on the PDF or right click here to get the instructions. These will give you step by step for each part of the quick start, which will help you follow along. OK, the first part of the workspace actually doesn't take place in the workspace. It takes place in Terra's data library. So if you open a new tab to go to the library, again, starting in app.terra.bio, you can browse data or go to data in the drop down library menu from the main navigation. Terra hosts a lot of open access and restricted access data, and it's integrated with the rest of the platform, which makes it really nice, as you'll see. We're going to be working with the 1000 Genomes low coverage data, which are public access. Click on Browse Data in the library. And you'll be taken to the Data Explorer. The Explorer lets you choose exactly the subset of participants that you want to study in the data. So there's a number of different fields, and you can choose what part of that field you want to study by clicking on the criteria. You can cancel at any time by just clicking on the X at the top where you have the criteria, and you'll get back to the full set. You notice that we're starting with a full set of 3,500 participants, and 
I'm just going to choose a South Asian superpopulation. Gets me down to 661 participants. And I decided that I want only people with exomes that were sequenced at BGI. So I'm going to select that for my criteria. That gets me down to 177 participants. And that's all I'm going to use for now. So I'm going to be building my study around those criteria. In order to work in Terra, do an analysis, I'm going to save the cohort by pressing the blue button right here. And you'll need to name the cohort. So I'm going to call this demo. And give it the date again. And then click Save. Tara will ask you where you want to put it. You can start with a new workspace, but we're not going to do that. We're going to start with an existing workspace. So click on that button. And you need to give it the name or select from this. I'm going to search for the date because I know this is the only workspace I've created today. Once you have your workspace, and you should just choose the workspace that you copied, you click on Import, and you'll be taken to the Data tab. Notice so there was a little banner that said the data were imported successfully. And over here under the Data Tables, if you click on Cohort, you'll see, indeed, here's the cohort that I created. You notice that this table, there's only one entry. If you wanted to make multiple cohorts of the same or different data tables, they would all show up under this table. So you'd have another row down here for each cohort. So there's a little nice information in the cohort table. It gives the data set name, where the cohort subset comes from, the URL where you can find the data, and the query right here. So this particular data set is kept in the cloud in BigQuery's structured data set warehouse. So it's similar to a big, very efficient spreadsheet in the cloud. And the way you get subsets of the data is you send a query with the particular characteristics that you want. So if you hover over this, you can see the whole query right here. You see where the exomes, were and this is the data set and it's going to give me people of south asian descent superpopulation etc okay so i've got my data the next step we're on step three is to actually work in the notebooks so click on the notebooks tab there are four notebooks in the quick start the optional notebook here, Intro to Jupyter Notebooks, is a tutorial that is step-by-step -step and gives you an insight into how to run a Jupyter Notebook if you have never done it before. So I recommend that if you've never worked in a notebook. If you have, you can start with, number one, setting up the runtime environment. So click on the notebook. There are two options, and we're going to select Edit. The default runtime configuration is fine, so just select Create. And if you look up at the notebook runtime, you'll see that it's creating. And this takes a few minutes. While you're waiting, you can look through the read-only preview of the notebook so you know what's coming next. And just need to wait a few minutes while your notebook is creating. Okay. When your runtime says that it's running, should be 20 cents an hour cost, you are ready to go. If you are interested in the additional information, you can always expand any tips as you go along. So the first part is an overview with directions, documentation key for the notebook. And the second step is some useful notebook extensions. These are actually already installed in Terra. So unless you're running this on a different platform, you don't have to run this part. Number three is understanding some extensions that we use to make the notebook tidy. And part four 
we get to the meat of the notebook where we're installing some additional packages. So you'll notice that each code cell comes with explanation of exactly what it's doing. And when the cell is running, there's an asterisk. The warning notes are expected for different things and nothing to worry about. You can get a bit of an explanation there. We've loaded the R packages and confirming they're running correctly. No warnings, so we're good. There's some troubleshooting tricks and tips there. And then the last step is to run a provenance cell which gives exactly which notebooks and packages are installed and which versions. So someone coming after you can do exactly the same thing. Once you've run the setup notebook, you can close it by clicking on the X. Notice your runtime is still going. And the next step is to run the analysis notebook. We're gonna run the BigQuery cohort analysis by clicking on it. Again, run in edit mode. And there's an overview right here. This notebook assumes you've already done the following, create a data subset in the Data Explorer, which we did. Export the participant IDs of the cohort to your workspace data table, check. And we just finished running the setup notebook in this workspace. So there's some information that you don't actually need. The next step is an additional environment setup. So if there are packages beyond even the setup notebook for this particular notebook, you'll find them here. So we're going to run these code cells. And again, they all have explanations in them. In this section, we're going to set the project globals, which are the particular workspace name, the project name. Running these code cells allows you to pull those directly rather than having to write them in and change it for each notebook. And then in section three, we're going to get the particular query in these steps. So this is a sanity check. Here's the query and you notice it gives the criteria we used. Select pop superpopulation South Asian so on and so forth. So that's just for checking. If you had made multiple cohorts, you can expand here to understand how you could run this notebook on multiple cohorts. In section four, we're actually going to call BigQuery. The notebook will reach up to BigQuery and actually get your data. So the first is to execute the query. And in the second one, we're going to look at the output. And as expected, it's a table of 177 participants, which is what our subset of data was. And the participant IDs of the members of that cohort are listed right here. So the query, we just got the participant IDs. In this step, we're going to add the actual data by joining with a second table. And again, these steps are all documented in the notebook. So right here, it's generating a table of two columns and the full 3,500 rows. Then we're creating a new table, which has the participant ID and the gender pairs. And then our new table is the right size. So it's 177 rows and two columns. And then in the next step, so here you've brought your data into the notebook runtime environment and in this next step, we're going to do a quick plot of the data to make sure we have what we have. And we have in our data set, we have women in this side and men in this side. So it's a very simple plot. It's not really meant to be an analysis, but here is where if you were doing your analysis, you would put whatever your code is right here. And as before, we have a prominence, which gives all the information about exactly what libraries and what packages you were using. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoy your analysis on the cloud.